Well, Belinda, again, thank you so much for taking some time this afternoon. I'm curious to hear you talk a little bit about why you think that protecting forests is important right now at this moment in the struggle for climate justice. When we think about trees, Dana, it's a vital part of our lives. Mm -hmm. We can basically, when you look at it, not live without trees. Um, Like I said, I had never seen an actual flood drained with my naked eye until mm. the last hurricane, I think it was Matthew, that came through Lumberton, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And my brother, we were taking him to the cancer center in Lumberton and mm. driving down the highway going into Lumberton. And I see all these homes with all this furniture stacked up in the yards where the homes had been flooded out, you know. Right. Um, it was it was devastating. Um, people just don't understand the significance of having those trees and Mm. It's not about protecting our environment. It's about the greed for money because all money is not bad. I mean, we know we have to have money for daily living. Right. But to just keep wanting to do something because you know that you're making that money, you're making that money um, and not have any um, remorse for the people that live right in these areas. Like, and I take back to Enviva. Mm-hmm. Houses in the front yard, houses in the backyard, you know, they're surrounded by in vivo. But look at what you're making, you know, um, and look at the cause. But nobody had remorse for the people that were directly affected by this plan. It's not just the ecological destruction mm-hmm. that's happening when the forest is clear cut and destroyed. But it's also the process. You, you can't separate that from the pollution on the other end. That comes exactly. out when, that wood, when those wood products are, are being produced. And even with the noise and the traffic, it bothers your health because um, one lady was saying that she didn't sleep well at night. Another gentleman, because of the noise, the squeaking brakes from the trucks, the changing of the gears, you know, and this is 24 mm-hmm. 7. So not only are they being impacted by the pollutants that's coming from in vivo, but just the noise that come with it, with the debarker going and the trucks and the traffic 24. And I mean, just when I say 24 7. Mm -hmm. I'm talking 24 seven, you know, if they weren't able to do that, um, you wouldn't have the pollution, you know, that we have in these Mm -hmm. communities. And so protecting the forest is as much about protecting the ecology and the land as it is about protecting the air and the community around it, surrounding Mm -hmm. it. It's good for people to come together because we can learn from each other. I've learned a lot from Dogwood. You know, um, I remember us going down to Chesapeake, Virginia to have a public hearing and then at the dock where the ships was going out, you know, um, that was a learning experience. And it was also exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear about things, but when you can just look at them and see them for yourself, it it, it gives you a better understanding of just what it, you know, what it is that's going on. Um, I, I think we're in a moment right now, Belinda, in terms of a movement of people that is similar to, you know, the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Martin Luther King said, you know, the arc of the universe bends towards justice, um, you know, and I think we're on that arc. And I think we're at a really important moment in time right now. Uh, Do you see that we're in the right place at the right time right now to really, advance climate and justice in a way that we haven't been before? You know, Dana, it's it's amazing that you say that because I was saying those same identical words this morning. Mm -hmm. People coming together. It's not about one organization. Mm -hmm. It's about all of us because we're fighting for the same cause. If it's not water, it's wood, um, the environment. I mean, we cannot separate the environment. Mm -hmm. It, It is here. It's something that's here. And I was saying that as long as we keep coming together the way we are and more people see what we're doing, it's a movement. And when we train them while they're young and they see what's going on, they will want to carry it on. 
Exactly. And just just last Wednesday was so it was just it was refreshing. It was inspiring to be able to go to the legislative building and, and speak and say what it was that we needed to say. And I think we got some attention because the gentleman that hosted it, I can't remember his name, the representative, he kept walking behind me. He said, my feet are on fire. My feet are on fire because you stepped all on my toes, you know? Um, and I said, you know, the truth is the truth. You know, we're your constituents when you're running. But once you get where you need to be, then it becomes the Duke energies and the Dominion powers and the Invivas and all these big conglomerates that have money. But, you took an oath of office mm -hmm. to work for your people. And how many of you take the time to go out in the community after you get elected and talk to your constituents and see what the problems are in the community? If you did that, then you could better come back and yeah. represent us. Absolutely. Well, in this bigger movement for environmental justice and justice, what is the role that you see Dogwood playing? Dogwood has started a... Can I say a revolution? Mm, you can. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> you know, it's a revolution and it's, it's something that's getting stronger and stronger as time go on because people are really now realizing what it's all about to save our farms. You know, so you all started it and now it has a stronghold where other people have grabbed on and said, okay, you know, we see what's happening now. We want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. We've learned so much from frontline communities that are on bearing the brunt of the impacts of this industrial logging and wood pellet industry. Um, and it's really been a partnership to tell the whole story of right. the impacts that this is having. Um, and I think that's just so powerful, the storytelling that we've done together. I tell other people, you don't know my story. Mm -hmm. I can tell my story better than you can. Just give me a chance to tell it. You know, and when I, I, I look around and I see we have a lot of senior citizens and people say, oh, why you go this place and why you go this place? I have to be a voice for my people mm -hmm. because we do have senior citizens that had a voice, but they're not able to get out now like they did. It's awesome, like I say, to be able to, like you say, live something and then tell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, storytelling is an awesome thing um, because if stories are not told, we would never know what's going on. Well, if you could, um, if you could wave a ma magic wand, Belinda, <laughs> wow! And you could, like, change one thing today um, to make you know the world a better place and to you know fix some of these problems. What well. If I could make, just had a magic wand that I could wave, it would be to bring peace to the land. Mm. To bring peace to the land. Mm. Um, it's so sad when we look around and see how divided mm. we are. Mm. But we, we live in the same universe. Mm. We breathe the same air. We bleed the same color blood. Mm -hmm. If that magic wand would just bring peace, if we just had peace among ourselves, um, then the world would be better. And, you know, we could be on a common ground where we could go and talk to these people about cutting down our trees and destroying our communities and all the other stuff that's going on that shouldn't be going on. You know, mm -hmm. um, it would be an awesome thing that people would be able to sit out on their porches and uh, enjoy the environment uh, without the noise, without the, you know, not being able to cook out because of residue coming from from these plants that's that's destroying us. Um, that would be an awesome thing 25 years from now. If we could see our boys and girls. I worked in the school system for over almost 40 years. And what I noticed about our children, if they're not taught racism, they don't know it. Because when they come, you know, the whole class, everybody's laughing and talking. You go to the playground, the children are running and playing. They're having a ball. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to the point where, oh, don't talk to them because they're black or don't talk to them because they're white. You know, that's not what God created this world for. Mm -hmm. He created us in his own image. And it had to be where everybody had to be different because it, nobody can be the same. You know, you're different. I'm different. But then we can come together because we're out here for the same cause. Mm -hmm. 
And if that could just continue 25 years from now, mm -hmm. when I think about the little children that's being born and coming up, you know, they need a better, they need a better atmosphere than what we have now so that they will be able to run and play and live and breathe and, you know, not worry about asthma and COPD and cancer and, you know, the whole nine yards. And like I say, 10 years ago, when I came to know Dogwood, and in those 10 years, like I say, you all are, Y'all have done some awesome, awesome stuff. And just the learning process and with what I know and what you all know and then what other organizations know and, you know, coming together, like I say, you know, it's a revelation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a revelation. And just, I say now that we have the door open, Dan, we cannot stop.